What you're looking at is not a brand. Your logo, your colors, or your tone of voice are all marketing assets sitting on top of something deeper that truly makes a brand. When I think of what a brand is, I think of this guy. Leo is our customer support lead. And although he makes no appearances in our marketing materials, his work is why we are known for seamless product migrations and world-class customer support. Leo is the shining example of what a brand really is. Unlike any other aspect of your business, your brand can't be shaped through executive orders, although it sure can be messed up through a wrong course of action. Instead, a brand comes together gradually over time influenced by every experience we deliver to our audience, and eventually by everything our audience says about us. And because a brand is so deeply impacted by what other people have to say about it, working on your brand is more like engaging in a conversation or hosting a party, rather than doing construction work or solving a math problem. Any activity designed to influence how others perceive you is branding. And strategic master plan to position your brand within the minds and hearts of others is what we call a brand marketing strategy. The benefits of a properly structured brand marketing strategy include generating more interest and engagement thanks to your ability to send out the right signals to the right people, reducing churn and retaining customers by aligning their expectations with the value you deliver, and building loyalty in your customer base by projecting a unique personality and offering values your competitors don't. Instead of approaching your brand as the phase in which you design your logo and coin your tagline, think of branding as an added layer to all your other business activities. This is important because everything that happens between you and your customer will eventually affect your brand, including your marketing content, your customer support, and even your product itself. No matter what you do as a company, someone is always watching. With no brand marketing strategy, all of these are just scattered business activities. At the core of your brand should be a single message you want to convey. And once you know what this message is, you can use it to pull all your business activities together and align them to support this key message. For example, Slack's brand message is about boosting productivity for tech teams by centralizing their communications. The product's interface aligns with this message by supporting every mode of communication a techie needs. The Slack blog is about improving workflows and communication. And even the logo hints at four diverse elements intersecting. Now, how you convey your message when people purchase your product will be quite different from how it's conveyed when you write a blog post or speak on a podcast. However, the core takeaway your audience needs to take from both interactions is the same. For your key message to really knock the ball out of the park, it needs to be tested in three different contexts. The first is in context with the problem you solve and the potential you unlock for your audience. This is often called your mission. The second context is your market. What differentiates you from your competitors and allows you to stand out? This is commonly known as your positioning. And the third context is who you are, why you are qualified to do what you do and why you care about it. This is what will be referred to as your identity. Let's start from the top with your mission. Your mission is essential not only to the crafting of your message, but to business development in general. It's about recognizing that what you're selling is not just a few lines of code packed in a zip file. What you're really selling is an improvement to people's lives. From a customer's perspective, this is what is perceived as what they're paying you to help them with. From your perspective, it's what you need to deliver. An initial requirement to defining your audience is to know exactly who your audience is. Because for your mission to find a responsive audience, you need to identify a specific customer it caters to. By specific customer, I mean people who share a particular goal or a common aspiration and face identifiable obstacles that your mission is to help them rise above. This is Rytus, co-founder of Omnisend, an email and SMS marketing platform founded in 2014. Omnisend's audience initially included small to micro-sized companies that struggled with the technical complications that came with bigger marketing platforms. At the very beginning, we start serving really like micro to small businesses with a very quite simple product. So basically, the initial messaging was simplicity of usage and email. Focusing your mission on a specific customer will help you understand their needs and then direct a message that appeals to them. This is instead of circulating generic messages that might address many customers but don't really captivate any of them. And another advantage that Omnisend found in niching down had to do with their visibility. If you run WordPress site or WooCommerce site, you usually Google uh, uh, like okay the best email solution for WordPress, not 
just the best email solution. Our tactics is to, to, to be present in those ecosystems like WordPress, Shopify, BigCommerce, etc. others, and then to be active and to be visible there. Once you can identify who your audience is, why they need your help, and how you're going to help them, your mission statement will be focused on what your audience can achieve with this help. For Omnisense audience, it's about cutting costs and winning new customers. A statement supported by the claim that Omniscent helps merchants make an extra $73 for every dollar they spend on the solution. Your brand positioning is all about how your company is perceived within a space that includes competition. It's about what makes you stand out as unique. And though niching down to a specific customer segment will help your positioning, even an accurately selected customer segment can't guarantee that your competition won't overpower your brand by stealing their attention. Your customers are paying attention to the competition. They're comparing you mm -hmm. to the other options. Justin methodically assumes that his customers will always be evaluating his offer in comparison with his competitors. He suggests that while you should avoid blending in with your competition by imitating them, it's crucial to monitor and respond to all the moves they make in order to make sure you stand out. What I always did is I would look at the competition was doing from a feature standpoint, from their value proposition, to get an idea of how they're going after the market and then seeing how we compared to their value proposition and if it was possible to nullify an advantage they had in that way and convince people of, of our way the logic here is that improving your positioning is easiest when you identify the most beneficial comparison point for you to tackle, whether it's changing the features themselves or changing how you frame them within your marketing content. When you nail your mission and positioning and your audience already understands what they're paying for and why it's more valuable to them than the alternatives, what they'll want to know next is who they're buying it from. Get pressure from competition to differentiate ourselves, and then we are bootstrapped. So we don't have hundreds of millions uh, of money to put in our marketing or sales activities. So we can't like buy more ads with money, as they will always have more cash. So we have to differentiate ourselves somehow differently. When Rytus reached out to customers, it seemed that they had no good reason to leave. The customer segment was well defined, no significant features were missing, and the competitors weren't really offering anything significantly different. And yet, Rytus realized that some customers were still intrigued to try competing solutions. The only plausible explanation was the lack of a clear identity to differentiate them. We understood that all the competitors, including ourselves, uh, they are more or less very similar and uh, they're just you know very rational okay we will help you to increase your sales etc and there is no uh, no no heart in it and we believe that will help us to differentiate us in the market which is very faceless i would say and then and, and very rational and yeah so that's that's the reason your brand's identity is not your biography so let me explain before you get all worked up into this mode dear diary don't even go there in fact, there's very little about you that we need to know at all, aside from why we should purchase the product from you rather than someone else. But a brand identity is usually fairly compact. It's focused on what makes you an expert on the problem you solve. What makes you different from others in your field? And why do you care enough to dedicate your time to solving the problem for other people? The answers are often tied to who you are as a founder. LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman is an expert in professional networking due to his experience as a venture capitalist. Dylan Field and Evan Wallace were different in their obsession for real-time browser-based collaborations when everyone else was stuck on desktop apps and sharing files. And Drew Hudson was just extremely pissed that he lost his USB memory stick. It's pretty straightforward. Answer these three questions and you have the core of your identity. However, the main problem is communicating an identity that's both intriguing and believable. When you think of it, the only effective story you can tell lies within a tiny sweet spot where a positive, compelling version of your story overlaps with an honest and authentic one. And this is true for businesses of any size. This is Patrick Posner, the one-man brand behind six successful software products. As a solopreneur, Patrick handles all the major aspects of his business on his own and he's being 100% transparent about it. He even refuses to brand himself with any company name other than his own personal name. One might think that this is a choice not to invest too much in branding, 
but the truth is quite the opposite. I think branding is super important. People want to connect with people. People want to interact with you and then they take a look at your products and see if they might fit within their own company. And it's just super hard if you're not like, if you can't be yourself and you try to act like a big company, people will know that you act like that and people will not trust you if you're uh, trying to be someone else. Patrick insists that when you're doing things on your own, it's not only important to be transparent as a way to gain people's trust, it's also something that you can leverage to avoid blending in with your competitors. As you're competing with huge companies, faceless companies with like 10 million users, you have to find a way to stand out. And I think being a solopreneur and being transparent about it is a good way to, to tackle that. And I think people appreciate it. And this remains true even as your company grows and expands. The solution Rightus found for Omnisense's identity crisis was also about bringing real personality into their outward communications. And one of the things with the Identify, we would like to be more and more kind of a bit more aggressive, a bit more funny outside. This is how we actually are inside the organization. We make jokes about one another. So basically the change we're currently making, we want to make ourselves more authentic. Infusing a brand with your personality is about more than the differentiation it creates. It's also fun. It sparks joy and inspiration. It helps drive the content you put out and makes it more likely engaging and memorable for your audience, potentially resulting in broader, longer lasting impact. If you are like maybe a bit boring brand, I mean, there's nothing to share. So when we start making those a bit more funny, funky things, etc., people start, you know, engaging with it and sharing proactively. I mean, we don't pay, it's not advertised, it's not like paid influencers, etc. But they just share notes on their social media. They like retweet, they repost on LinkedIn, on our Facebook, they just make their own post. Oh, look, what kind of video, what kind of ad did they find, etc. To support your brand, the identity you project must align with the mission and positioning we previously discussed. But as long as they're aligned, it really doesn't matter what the identity is as long as it's compelling, believable, and used consistently throughout your communications. Once you know your mission, positioning, and identity, your message is a breeze. At Freemius, as an example, our mission is to empower software makers by enabling them to sell their products and collect data-informed insights. Our unique position is that we focus on software because we ourselves are software makers. So we know what it takes to launch, grow, and scale a product that you're passionate about. It's a thrill that comes with a lot of challenges that we help makers overcome. Now that you know your message, the name of the game is consistency and alignment. When you get to the stage of communicating your message, it's important that not only your mission, positioning, and identity are aligned. It's important that your message is aligned at every touch point the customer encounters. To map this out, it's useful to look at a modern day version of a marketing funnel. This funnel starts with generating brand awareness at the top and extends beyond the initial sale to cultivating customer success and loyalty. It's a paradigm that encompasses the entire product customer relationship. Going through this funnel will allow you to identify which means of communication are used by your business and identify leaks in the funnel where your messaging is out of line. Let's run through a quick list of important takeaways. Your brand is about what other people think and feel, which is entirely out of your control. What you can control is all the moving parts of your business that eventually impact how others feel about your brand. A brand marketing strategy will help you identify all the touch points you have with your audience and align them to convey one consistent message. Your message needs to illuminate three different aspects of your business. Your mission, meaning the problem you solve and who you solve it for, your positioning, what makes you the best at what you do, and your identity, the unique journey that made you an expert and highlights why you care. Once your message is clear to you, convey it to others through every aspect of your business, including your product, customer relations, and public appearances. If you need support in analyzing your funnel or perhaps coming up with more ideas on how to further promote your brand, check out this video I posted in the comments section. Thank you so much for joining us. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and see you in the next video.